In the last few videos, we've seen how we can use a really clever set of recursive class definitions to build an infinitely extensible list. So for example, the S list. With S list, we can do add last over and over and over until we get bored of it, or I guess our computer runs out of memory. But as a theoretical construct, the S list can grow forever. Now in this next set of videos, what we're going to do is ultimately build an A list, an array based list that uses a totally orthogonal way of storing information. In particular, it will use arrays rather than a recursive uh, list structure. So let's start by just thinking back about how memory works. Okay? So in general, if we need to build a list, if we want to say have a list of a million items, we need a million memory boxes. We've talked about different ways that you can get memory boxes in Java. One of them is to declare a variable. So for example, if I say int x, Java goes, gets me 32 bits of memory, sets them aside as a little box for us, uh, and then we can store integers in that box. If we say walrus w1, that gives us a memory box of 64 bits that can store the location of a walrus. Uh, and if we say walrus w2 equals new walrus, in this case, a bunch of different stuff happens. But ultimately, what happens is that we get 32 bits to store the size of the walrus, 64 bits for the tusk size. And we also get 64 bits over here to store the reference to this walrus. Uh, so these are all different ways of getting memory boxes. We've, we've taken advantage, advantage of uh, this idea here in order to build S lists or D lists. And so what we're going to do next is use arrays. So what are arrays really? I mean, you've used them in homework zero and in project zero. Uh, but the most crisp way of thinking about an array is to think of it as a numbered sequence of memory boxes. So just like a class is a named uh, set of memory boxes, arrays will be a numbered sequence. Uh, and what I mean by a named uh, set is, for example, walrus. It has a size, which you access using dot notation, wal you know, w dot size or w dot tusk size. With arrays, we use this bracket notation. So if I want the third item of the array, that's called a, let's say, uh, we'll do a bracket three. So in a sense, they have a lot of similarities with classes. Uh, now, if we want to really be very specific about what an array is, it's not just that sequence of memory boxes, but it will also have a length. So in terms of what you can do with it in Java, you can ask it for its length, or you can get these sequence of memory boxes. Now, an important thing is that the number of memory boxes is always going to match that length. I mean, that makes sense. Uh, and we also are going to have a very special rule, which is that all the boxes have to be the same type. And that's unlike other languages like Python, where the built-in list type can include different things of different types. In Java, all of those boxes must be the same type and thus the same number of bits. Uh, and just as an aside, those boxes will always be numbered from 0 uh, to length minus 1. Now, just like a class, I'll make a note that whenever you instantiate an array, uh, what will happen is you get one reference at the time it's created. Uh, and if it is the case that you throw away your only reference to that array, just like any old regular object, uh, you will, or any class instance, uh, you will never be able to get it back. The garbage collector will eat it up, and uh, that's it. Okay. Now, unlike classes, arrays will never have methods. They're just going to be data. That's going to be a length and a sequence of numbered memory boxes. 